live a life so free, knowing Jesus, he lives in me. And when I fail, I plead the blood, alive and well, it's still enough. And when the devil comes my way and says in hell, for sin I'll pay, I point him to that rugged hill and say thanks to Jesus I never will Oh, he locked the gates He locked the gates of hell behind me And then he threw Right then he threw The keys he away He the keys away He laid He locked the gates so gate, so give him glory There'll never come a day I've been to such a place For the day that I got saved He locked the Well, good evening. It's good to be back tonight in our uh, midweek service, back to the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's all grab our hymn books. If you're able, would you stand? Turn to page 262. 262. There is power in the blood. Sing it like you mean it. Amen. 262. We'll do the first, second, and last. 262.
Page 259, 259, the cleansing wave, I see, I see. Amen. Page 259, the now I see the cleansing wave, the fountain deep and wide. Jesus, my Lord, my deeds to save, points to his wound inside. The cleansing stream, I see, I see, I plunge and oh. Amazing grace, tis heaven below to feel the blood applied. Aren't you thankful for his amazing grace? Uh, reading that made me think of a situation that we had here. And uh, we have a, a student in our academy. And the student, elementary age kid here in Mobile, uh, going to a school here in Mobile, J.E. Turner. I'll just tell you the school. I don't care. J.E. Turner. The, the child, they all had to do some kind of singing project. And so the uh, young girl just selected to sing Amazing Grace. And the principal and the school board denied her the opportunity to sing Amazing Grace. She had anything else she wanted to sing, jam, jam, boogie, boogie, rock, whatever. But they denied her, and the mom said, that was it. She said, we're done. And, uh, and so obviously uh, it didn't work there, and so, uh, but she's in our academy now. And so... I tell you, elementary, like you think high school maybe, you know, but even the young ones, you know, and it's like, and, and, and she said, she said, I just wanted to sing Amazing Grace, you know, and so, uh, but praise the Lord for the grace of God, and I told her when I interviewed her and her mom and the family, I said, we, lo she said something about Jesus, and I said, well, we love Jesus here, so <laughs> that's a good thing, and uh, so, you know, praise the Lord for the grace of God. All right, let's have a word of prayer, ask the Lord's blessing on the service tonight. Brother Steve Brandon, would you please pray for us? Amen. Amen. You can be seated. All right. Uh, let's see our prayer uh, list here. A couple things to keep in mind. Hey, we do have some of these Walk in Truth series. Just want to mention it to you. 
Uh, they're really good. They're, we've got different ones like sports, principles, the body, the church. And uh, it's 30 devotions in these. I think it's 30 or 31. Let me, let me verify. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, 30, 31. 31 devotions in here. And they're just one-page devotions. Sometimes parents are looking for something to use with kids. These are really convenient because with children, sometimes their uh, attention span is like that. And uh, you, no, no offense, kids, but you know what I mean. And so, I mean, if you just crack open, well, we're going to have our Bible devotion day. Crack open the family Bible, and we're in Ezekiel chapter 24. And, uh, and you, the kids are just like, bah, you know. Uh, and you're like, well, you should love the Bible. You know, I mean, uh, listen, with kids, obviously we need to be you know, mindful of, you know, them and all. And these are really good. These good conversation starters, 31 in here, one for each day. Little questions at the bottom and uh, Bible verses in it. Uh, this is on principles, no respecter of persons, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Oh, that would go real well with some teenagers. The, borrow, the borrower is servant to the lender, don't quit. And so lots of things like that. Manners, that's a good one. Anger is outrageous. And so a quote, little quote at the bottom of them uh, as well. So if you'd like to get one of these, we pay for them. We want to be a blessing to you. Uh, I would encourage you to grab one and uh, use it with your kids or have your kids go through it. Maybe just say, hey, y'all do this for your, you know, part of your daily devotion, whatever you want to do. But I uh, want to mention those to you. And so Brother Chad knows where they are. See Brother Chad if you'd like to get one of these, and we'll put it in your hands, and you are welcome to have them. So if you take it, use it. Amen? All right, and so we got those. Also, all the tracks, I think, a 1,000 tracks are G-O-N-E gone, right? This is not part of the 1,000. There are some others back there, but I don't think those are part of the 1,000 either. And there's some fall-themed tracks also. Feel free to get some of those if you don't have any for Friday night. And uh, be sure, uh, obviously, they should all be labeled. Give those out. Word of God's in here, and uh, you have people knocking on your doors. And so be sure to give those out. Be a witness and a testimony on I said Friday. I keep saying Friday. It's tomorrow night. It's Thursday night. So, okay, very good. Let's go ahead and update our prayer list here. Brother Chad, you got a pen I can borrow, man? I thought I have. I thought I saw one up here, and then I got going. I'll mention this to you, Miss uh, Miss uh, Geraldine Nobles, Miss Sonia Kilpatrick's mom, brother Clay Kilpatrick's grandmother. She is uh, having some health issues and uh, has cancer. Miss Sonia reached out to me today and just asked us to pray for her. So she's not on the list, but I'm going to write Geraldine down here and because uh, I got it after the fact. But Miss Geraldine Nobles, she's in mobile infirmary. they got to operate. Uh, they've got to amputate part of her foot, I believe, just a toe, but uh, going through a tough time with cancer and everything. And so uh, they said there's no reason for them to do any kind of PET scan or anything at this point because her condition and just being up in years. Opal, 93, 93. And so just keep Miss Geraldine in your prayers. Think about this. It could be your grandmother, right? Think about that, young people, teenagers. It could be your grandmother that's going through this. And so be mindful that this is someone's grandma, someone's mom. And, uh, and let's keep Miss Geraldine. And she was, man, when she was able to get around, faithful soul winner, uh, would go out to the abortion clinics here in Mobile uh, with signs with Bible verses on it and just try to reach those women down there. So keep her in your prayers. Uh, let's see here. Also want to mention here, continue to pray uh, for the outreaches of the church, prison ministry, bus ministry. Still uh, could use helpers with that. This Saturday at 10 o'clock, uh, we'll have our soul winning and visitation. So feel free to meet up here at 10 a.m. for that. And then also uh, a couple of salvations there, Miss Olivia McNorton, Miss Joyce's granddaughter, and then Tom Lamey for salvation. How many tonight have an unspoken prayer request all over the building there? So unspoken requests are mentioned. Continue to pray for church growth physically and spiritually for revival. Amen. And then it's already been mentioned, but uh, the upcoming election. Well, how many days do we have? Six days? Seven days? When is it? What's the date? The fifth? It's... It's the 5th, so it's next Tuesday. Wow, it'll be here before you know it. And so pray for the Lord's will to be done. Uh, so pray for that, that God will be glorified. And, uh, man, I was watching the, just the footage of uh, the Trump rally at the Madison Square Garden, 20,000 people, and I was thinking, wow. I mean, it was just, I think America is definitely ready for a positive change in a different direction. And I'm very careful to say this, because there's a lot of folks that take uh, former President Trump and put him up on a pedestal like he's our savior. 
He's not our Savior, okay? He needs Jesus Christ, right? We understand that. But when we think about a president, we need to be mindful of what we've had, what we need, and, and vote accordingly. And, uh, and so he's not our Savior. And so I, I tell people all the time, I'm voting for a president, not a pastor, okay? He's not, he, he's not a pastor. He's definitely not our Savior. And, uh, and so pray for his salvation, his family's salvation. Uh, pray for our current president, Obad. Uh, <laughs> Was that a Freudian slip? <laughs> president Biden. And, <laughs> and uh, his family for the Lord to work in their life, too. So pray for all that. Okay, let me move on. Uh, Owl family mourning, and this is uh, Brother Steve Brannon's son-in-law. His grandfather passed away. So pray for the Howell family going through a time of mourning. And then uh, Miss Jennifer Richardson, keep praying for her. Also, the Mark Eakes family, it says uh, that mom was taken off life support. She got uh, the West Nile virus from a... I guess a mosquito bite or whatever, ended up in the hospital. They had, went downhill pretty quickly, took her off life support. Mom texted me a while ago and said that she has passed away. So that should be changed to mourning. And so pray for the Mark Eakes family uh, going through a time of mourning. Also continue to pray for Miss Peggy Giddens, Brother Robbie's mom, and then Tim Pageant for cancer. Uh, Pepper Givens, uh, Miss Jamie's daughter, physical and spiritual needs. Little Emery Simpson, three years old with uh, major medical issues, dealing with some more stuff right now, so keep her in prayer. And then also uh, Miss Angela's daughter, Chrissy Obiol and the baby. Just pray for spiritual needs. Uh, she is back incarcerated, and so just pray God will work in her life. If you've ever been down that road or know someone that's been down that road with addiction and things and mental health issues, uh, church, it can be a very, a very lonely and dark place. And so, and, and a lot of times the family is suffering and the person that's dealing with all this doesn't even think about the, the strain and the, uh, you know, the toil that it takes on the family. And so just pray for the family. The Lord will bless. Pray for Chrissy that God will work in her life. Uh, also, Ray and Bonnie Evans, that's my aunt and uncle, physical needs. Miss, uh, Miss Bonnie, my aunt Bonnie went to the ER this morning with chest pains. And so keep her in your prayers that the Lord will bless there. Brother Randy, back needs there, physical needs with his back. And then Christy Holmes, physical needs. Uh, also April and Braxton Brockmiller, they visit on Sunday mornings occasionally. She had messaged and said, Brother Tim, please have the church pray for me and Braxton. So keep them in your prayers. And then Angie and Cole Palmer, we want to continue to pray for them, physical needs. And then uh, Deanne's having surgery on Monday. She asked us to lift her up, lift her up to the Lord in prayer. And then Jonathan O'Shea, physical mobility, uh, paralyzed, but he's currently also having some lung and bladder infection problems, and uh, he's connected to uh, Brother Roger and Miss Darlene Stebbins, so keep them in prayer. Uh, there was one more I was supposed to mention. Yes, Miss Hattie Watson. Yeah, ladies in our church. Uh, her, one of her sons, Don Watson Jr., reached out to me, and she's at home uh, really sick, and, and so, but he had mentioned that... Uh, a visit to go see her might be good for some of the ladies in the church. And so if you think about it, you got time, want to do that, uh, Miss Hattie could use a visit. But she, he said she's just not feeling well and kind of been under the weather. So I want to mention that to you. Okay, and then our missionaries, of course, on the back there, keep them in prayer. Uh, Dave and Melissa Price, our missionary family of the week there in St. Gaudens, France. Keep them in prayer also serving the Lord on the mission field. And our, we'll be traveling tomorrow and Friday girls volleyball team got it going to Hattiesburg for the tournament and so uh, pray for safety and uh, pray they'll beat all the other teams in a, in a great way so <laughs> Emily saying yeah and uh, so th they've earned it 25 years and uh, this is the best year they've ever had in volleyball so they finished first and second place in the conference the JV and varsity and then uh, the tournament we'll see how it goes so pray the Lord to bless there and that they'll have a good time and God will keep us safe Okay, let's take a minute and ask the Lord to meet these needs that we have. Let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior. Lord, we thank you just for your grace and mercy. And as Brother Steve already mentioned, Lord, we, we don't deserve any of it. And, uh, Father, so often we take it for granted. And, Lord, we confess that to you tonight. Lord, we, uh, we think I can't help but just the election's on my mind. It's been on my mind. And, Lord, I'm, I'm concerned for our nation. But I think more importantly, Father, I'm concerned for our local church. Uh, Lord, help us not to lose sight of the big picture. Lord, help us not to take our eyes off of you and, and, and put them too heavily upon this election and, and everything that's going on. 
Lord, help us to keep our focus on you, knowing that, as Brother Steve prayed, no matter what the outcome is, Lord, we know that you're in control, and Lord, that you have a plan. Uh, but Father, I do pray for a, a space of revival, a season of grace and mercy for our country. Uh, Lord, I pray you would do that if it be your will. And uh, God, I pray that you would just bless our families, Lord, and here at our church. Lord, help us to be the church families you've called us to be. We thank you for this uh, local group of believers that meets together here, Lord. I think it's a special place with special people, Lord, and we know that you're the one that makes that difference in our life. And I pray, God, you'd be with each of these needs, many physical needs that are mentioned, Lord, those that are dealing with cancer. Lord, what a, what a terrible disease. And I pray, Lord, for these families that are going through that, Miss Geraldine and others, I pray that you would touch their body with healing. Uh, Miss Peggy Giddens, Lord, and Brother Tim Pageant, pray you'd have your will in their situations, Father. Lord, those that need spiritual uh, deliverance, Lord, that really need uh, help along those lines, we lift them up to you. We pray for Chrissy, Lord. I pray you'd work in her life. We pray also for Pepper with the addictions there. And, Lord, you know exactly where they are, what they're dealing with. And, Lord, uh, sometimes uh, folks just have to come to the end of themselves to be able to see what they need. And I pray, Lord, that you would work in their life in a special way so that they might give their heart and life to you and realize that there is a better, there is a better way, Lord. And I pray that they would trust you as Savior and follow you. Lord, we do pray that you would bless uh, Aunt Bonnie and Uncle Ray. Be with her, Lord, in her physical needs. Be with Deanne going in for surgery. Lord, continue to bless our church, grow our church according to your will. And, Lord, I pray that you'd be with Miss Angie Palmer, Lord, and all the physical things that she's dealing with right now. We lift her up to you. Uh, Father, for Jonathan O'Shea, we pray you'd be with him. Uh, Lord, be with him and just uh, being paralyzed and everything that goes along with that and his family and having infection in his body right now. Lord, uh, there, there's so many different things. People are hurting and people are going through different struggles. We pray, God, that you would take care of them, Lord, and provide grace for them in these difficult times. Lord, for the unspoken request, we do pray that you would meet those needs that we have, Lord, that we don't mention publicly. And, Lord, we're so thankful that you do hear and answer our prayers. Lord, it's not always a no. It's not always a yes. Sometimes it's just a not right now. And I pray, God, that you would give us grace to accept whichever that might be. Uh, Father, we do pray that you would bless the outreach, Lord, and all the, Lord, over a thousand tracts that will be given out tomorrow night. Lord, I just pray that you would use your word, Lord, to reach into those little hearts of those children and even parents that will read those tracts, Lord, and take your word, Father, and do that which only you can accomplish. I pray, God, that some would even be saved as a result of it. Lord, maybe we'd get visitors that will come out and uh, visit church, Lord, as a result of getting all the gospel tracts tomorrow night. Lord, what a blessing that's going to be, Lord. Keep the volleyball team safe traveling, Lord, tomorrow and tomorrow evening. And, Lord, I pray you'd help them to do well at the tournament. Pray, God, you'd bless them there. We thank you for the good season they've had this year. And, uh, Lord, we just pray you continue to bless them. Uh, Father, we do pray that you would, Lord, just give us a, a good night around your word tonight, Lord. Help us to be mindful that, Lord, everything that we're dealing with and going through, Lord, there's usually somewhere, some, somebody somewhere else that's got a little tougher struggle that they're dealing with. And, Lord, help us to be mindful of that so that we might realize that our situation may not be as quite as bad as we think it to be. And, Lord, we do thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. I pray, Lord, that you'd bless tonight and meet all these needs on the list. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Brother Chad. Amen. Let's turn our hymn book to, once again to 536. 536. O oh, Zion, haste. 536.
as we make our way back to our seats, we're going to go ahead and continue singing 536, verse number 2, page 536, verse number 2. Amen. All right, let's go to Philippians chapter number two. 
You ought to hear Brother Tim on the guitar, Keegan. Oh, a ukulele. Well, I ain't never played a ukulele. So that'd be really bad. <laughs> Amen. Oh, it's a blessing hearing them come along. So good deal. All right, Philippians chapter number two. <laughs> I am not a music person, so... Amen. I bought a harmonica. I've tried the harmonica. I wanted to play harmonica. I bought the book to teach me how to play, and it just didn't work out. I mean, it sounded like a train wreck, literally a train wreck. And, uh, man, I, I, guitar, you know, piano, bought all the books for everything, and I just better stick to reading the Bible. So, all right, Philippians chapter 2, back in our study here. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off. We got all the way to verse number 5. And Paul's writing these believers in Philippi and encouraging them. Really good, really good epistle. It's different than the other Pauline epistles in the sense that no major doctrinal issue is dealt with. The only thing Paul alludes to is uh, maybe a little bit of uh, disunity in the church. Maybe just a little bit of maybe there was a small group that maybe w didn't understand or was struggling with the importance of everybody being unified. And so he does mention that and then he kind of gets away from it. And uh, we get into this uh, new section here in chapter number 2. So Philippians 2, if you found your place and you're able, would you stand with me? We'll read a couple verses here. Look at verse number 1. Paul writes, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, and he's asking questions here, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, which the answer to all of those is yes to all of them, he said, well, if so, then fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. That'll solve a lot of problems in friendships, marriages, relationships, you name it. He said, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Now that goes against to modern thinking, right? I've seen t-shirts that say, he who dies with the most toys wins. I mean, that's crazy, right? That's crazy talk. And uh, the Bible says, no, don't, don't look on your own things, but look every man also on the things of others. Verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Father, help us tonight as we look into the Word of God. Pray, Lord, you speak to hearts. Help us to understand it. Lord, give us wisdom, Lord. I pray that we'd not just be hearers of the Word, but, Lord, we would apply it to our lives and be doers of the Word as well. Lord, we live in a society, Lord, a day and age where there's so many folks that do not want to hear the truth, Lord, to even hear of a situation where a public school denies a little girl the opportunity to sing Amazing Grace yet she could sing all sorts of worldly, secular garbage, really speaks volumes about where this country's at. And God, I just pray that you would forgive us as a people, as a nation. Lord, we don't deserve anything better in this upcoming election, and we would be very naive and foolish to think so. Uh, but Lord, we do ask you for better. We pray for better. We pray, God, that you would bless and that you would be honored. And God, that you would uh, just have your will and way in everything that's said and done. Lord, bless our time together tonight around the Word. Speak to hearts like only you can, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You can be seated. All right, verse number 6. Let's don't waste any time. Uh, it's been a long day for most everybody in here. I understand that. I'm mindful of that. Glad you came out to worship the Lord with us. But verse number 6, let's get right into it. Paul goes on here, he continues, and he's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, obviously. And he says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And so he's writing the church at Philippi, and as he's talking about having unity, he's talking about humility, he goes to the greatest example that we have. And church, it's not a matter of what would Jesus do, it's all about what did Jesus do. Like read the Bible, look at what the Lord did, and Paul's using Christ as the great example for the church at Philippi to consider. Uh, Paul first describes the person and position of Christ, basically who he is. Paul says that Jesus, notice the text, was in the form of God. That is to say this, that Jesus literally existed in the form of God. He, he literally existed uh, as God Almighty, okay? It speaks of the deity of Jesus Christ. Paul's declaring that Jesus Christ is God, that Jesus, even before his virgin birth, even before that first Noel, think about it, church, before he became a man, 
He was equal with God Almighty. All right, now, and that's important, right? If we don't, if we don't understand, if we don't accept or believe in the deity of Christ, then how could He pay for your sin and my sin? He can't do it. He's just ordinary man, right? But the fact that He is God and He a one hundred percent God, one hundred percent man, and lived a perfect, sinless life, He was able to offer His blood for the atonement of our sins. And so Paul says that he was in the form of God. Uh, and think about it, that in heaven, okay, uh, all who saw Jesus Christ, he appeared as God. He had all the attributes of God. In fact, equal with God. Now, to make Jesus any less than God is to take away his deity. Church, you have to pay close attention when some people talk about Jesus. There's some people that will say, well, I believe in Jesus. But the Jesus that they're believing in may not be the Jesus that you and I believe in from the Word of God. And, 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 and you gotta, you got to listen to them. you got to pay attention, right? There's some that might would say, well, Jesus was a good man. They really believe that He existed. Like He was an individual that lived a, a real life and lived on this planet and was born of Joseph and Mary. Did you hear that? Was born of Joseph and Mary. And they'll go down that path, right? Well, Jesus was not born of Joseph. Amen. Now, he was his earthly dad, if you will, over him, okay, while he was a child and coming up, but uh, had no part in the birth of Jesus Christ, okay? And so we believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. And so be careful when people just talk about, maybe mention the name Jesus. Uh, They might not believe in the same Jesus that the Bible speaks of. Now, to make Jesus any less than God is to take away his deity. So Paul explains the position of Christ... But then the person of Christ, notice he says, all right, Jesus in that form, in the form of God, look what he says about him, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. The word robbery means to seize, uh, it means to hold fast. So the idea is that before Jesus was sent to this earth in the form of man, in the form of the dirt man like you and I, okay, Adam, okay, before he was sent to this earth, He was willing to lay aside his position. He was willing to not hold fast to that position that he had in heaven as God, equal with God. And he was willing to let that go, not to hang on to that. And again, it was only to fulfill the will of the Father so that God's creation may have a way of escape when it comes to having to pay for our sins. But he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Church, here's the idea. He was willing to lay his position aside. He was willing to not hold fast to that lofty position of God in heaven, right? He's equal with God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now, church, in order for that to happen, Jesus Christ literally humbled himself to come here to become a man, right? To to come submit himself to the pain, the suffering. Now, understand, yes, he was God in the flesh, but answer this question, did he feel pain? Absolutely felt pain. Did he feel heartache? Absolutely felt heartache, okay. Uh, did, he, did he experience emotion? Absolutely he experienced emotion. How about this one? Was he tempted like we're tempted? Absolutely. And I think sometimes we forget that. Like sometimes we think we think about Jesus and we don't stop and realize that he experienced the very same temptation that you and I experience, okay? Now, with one very major difference. What was the difference? Yes, he never gave in to the temptation, okay? Uh, yes, he was tempted, but he never said yes to the temptation. And so, uh, he, church, he laid aside everything in heaven. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He was willing to humble himself, lay it aside lay aside that lofty position in heaven to come to this earth to be born, uh, you know, the the man Christ Jesus, okay? 100% God, 100% man. Now, in a way, if you not in a way, but if you think about it, okay, it was almost like he took a demotion to come to this planet. He took a demotion to come here to be born of the Virgin Mary. And when I was thinking about it this week, the closest I could think of to some kind of illustration, have you ever seen the show Undercover Boss, some of those episodes... Man, the CEO of the company, nobody raised their hand like you're afraid to admit you've watched Undercover Boss. I kind of like them. I get emotional at some of them, right? My kids laugh at me. Dad, are you crying? You know, I'm like, he just gave that poor lady 
$10,000, he just changed her life. That's amazing, you know. Stuff like that just kind of hits me right in the heart, you know. I mean, it is what it is. I don't mind admitting it. And, uh, well, th there was one episode where the CEO, the big boss, the owner of Rotor Rooter. Now, who knows what Rotor Rooter is in the business of, <laughs> right? You know, the commodes. And... Uh, that's a, that's, a rough, that's a rough line. We, we, we had to call them out one day because me and Brother Jimmy and uh, the other guys, we, we could not fix the problem. I mean, when we went to Lowe's, we bought every kind of snake and every kind of drill attachment. And, and we got kids up here that decide to do some crazy things some days at school, and we have to pay the price of it. And so the rotor rooter guy came out because we could not fix it. And, and we were standing there, man, we were messing with all the pipes. And, man, we had stuff all the way up to our elbows and our shoulders, and it was nasty. And uh, we were talking about, uh, you know, drawing a bad card, you know, figure of speech. And the rotor rooter guy looked up at us and he said, I draw a bad card every day. And I was like, oh, man. I told Brother Jimmy, I said, we don't have it that bad, brother. <laughs> yeah, and that guy was serious. You know, he said, I draw a bad card every day. Uh, but the, the, the CEO, the owner of rotor rooter decided to lay aside his suit and tie and put on some coveralls and a little rotor rooter you know, a badge or whatever in his name and, and go out on the job site and work as an entry-level technician. And listen, and so when I think about, obviously it's a very weak illustration or analogy, but when Jesus, when he left heaven's glory, church, it was a demotion, okay? He came to this wicked, sin-cursed earth. He came to this place where we struggle, we have pain, we have suffering, we have, we have trials in our life. And Jesus said, I will leave heaven's glory. I will lay aside my crown. I will lay aside all the glory of heaven and his lofty position to be born Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Friend, listen, that's a demotion. Now, he did that for you and I. Now, notice how Paul describes it in verse 7. He said, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. The word reputation, reputation here is very important. It means to make empty or to make void. And so here's the idea. Jesus willingly, here it is, he emptied himself of everything that came along with his prestigious position in heaven that made him equal with God. He was willing to make himself of no reputation, to empty himself, to make void of everything that he had in heaven to come to this wicked earth to be born of the Virgin Mary so that we might have a home in heaven. He laid aside all the glory of heaven, all the prestige of heaven, to be born a man just like you and I, to lay aside even, think about this, to lay aside even some of the attributes of his glory, of his deity as God. Laid some of that aside to be here as Jesus Christ. Yes, still God in the flesh. Yes, still able to do all as God. But he laid aside many of his God attributes so that he might identify with his creation. For listen, he left royalty and in many senses he took the position, if you will, as the service tech for rotor rooter I mean, sin's pretty nasty, okay? And Jesus came and had to experience that, but chose to do it. Now, you remember the Garden of Gethsemane. There was one moment where Jesus Christ even was tempted to do what? What happened in the Garden of Gethsemane? He was tempted to do what? Trying to keep you awake tonight. Talk to me. To do what? To walk away, to walk away from it. To walk away from it. To, as he was in the garden and he's praying and the disciples were supposed to be praying, what were they doing? Yeah, amen. That's what he said. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, boys, you know. And so he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he literally prays, Lord, let this cup pass from me. Here's the idea. I know what I've got to drink. I know what's in the cup. I understand the cup. And, and Father, let this, would you let this cup pass from me? Father, I, as I think about this, because remember, yes, he's God, but we cannot strip away the fact that he laid aside some of his, his, his God attributes to identify with you and I. And so he, know, he knows exactly what it feels like when you want to quit. He knows exactly what it feels like when you want to throw in the towel and you say, hey, this is too hard. This is too tough. I can't handle this right now. The pressure that people are putting on me and what's expected of me, I just can't do it. He knows exactly how you feel. 
exactly. And he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. But then, you know how he, what he said after that. What did he say? Nevertheless, he said, not my will, but thy will be done. At church, that's where we struggle, right? Man, listen, we get in those moments where we're weak and, man, we're, we're quick to throw in that towel and we, we run from it sometimes. But Jesus, our example, he said, nevertheless, he said, not my will, but thy will be done. So think about it. Verse 7, he made himself of no reputation, right? He, 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 he made himself empty. He walked away from the prestige of heaven, everything about it, so that he could identify with you and I. He became, he took upon himself a human body, lived among us, became a man, the God-man. Now, John 1, 14, you know this verse, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, the Bible says. And so church, in accomplishing this, in doing this, think about it. As Paul states in this text here, Jesus became a servant. He said, made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. He literally subjected himself in doing this to what you and I have to deal with every single day. Again, the pain, the suffering, the trials, the temptation, the emotions, Everything that we deal with, Jesus Christ experienced that, okay? Jesus Christ, right? Think about it. King of kings, uh, the Almighty, He left heaven's glory, became a man like you and I, 100% God, yes, 100% also man. He went from the highest rank to the lowest rank, you could say. And, and it's obviously still being God Almighty, right? Now, the million-dollar question is, why would anybody do that, okay? Why, why would the CEO of Rotorooter walk aside, lay aside his suit and tie, and, and go along and, and become the lowest ranked person in his business to, for, for what purpose, right? Well, hopefully, their purpose usually is to make the company better or to, you know, they end up helping some people out. But, friend, listen, when Jesus Christ did it, he had one thing in mind, and that was the salvation of humanity. That was so that God's creation, right? Human beings, you and I, so that we might have an opportunity to have a home in heaven and not have to worry about perishing in a devil's hell. That's why he did it. That's why he came to this earth, okay? So that he could go to Calvary and, and bear our sins on his own body. So why did he do it? Because he loves you and I. He loves his creation. Church, this was the Father's will. This was the only way to secure redemption for humanity. All the bloodshed in the Old Testament, it could not atone for the sins of humanity. All the sacrifices the priests made and the, you know, for the people could not completely satisfy a holy and a righteous God. Think with me. Jesus could do, could accomplish what the blood of animals could not. Hebrews 9.22, the Bible says this, "...and almost all things are by the law purged with blood." And without shedding of blood, the Bible says, is no remission. And some might would say, well, why did Jesus have to die for me? I mean, why didn't he just say, let this happen, you know? Why, why did he have to shed his blood? Why did they have to beat him? Why did they have to torture him? I mean, why did he go through all of that? Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, according to the Word of God. Church, the great God of creation took upon himself a human body so that he could offer himself a sacrifice for our sin on the cruel cross of Calvary. Now, that's love. That's God's love directed towards you and I. That's why Jesus did it. That's why He humbled Himself. Now, Paul goes on to make this clear to the church at Philippi. Look at verse 8. He said, And being, fashioned, and being found in fashion as a man, He humbled Himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The word fashion here has the sense of essence. In other words, Jesus was found in the essence of being human, in the essence of humanity. Again, 100% God, but at the same time, 100% man. He was in essence, okay, man just like you and I, human just like you and I. And therefore, he humbled himself, right? Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. He made himself of no reputation. Here it is. He lowered himself. He brought himself down from his lofty position in heaven. Church, this lowering himself led him all the way to Calvary. You ever thought about this? Jesus, Jesus was born so that he might die. 
He was born with a death sentence upon him, right? He was born with the will of the Father already being established. God the Father knew what needed to happen. Jesus Christ knew what needed to be happened. Friend, listen, uh, he knew. He, can you imagine that? Even as a, a young boy, because remember, he, he, he submitted himself to time as Jesus Christ. He submitted himself to, 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 to growing and maturing as a, from, a, from an infant to a toddler to a, a young person to a teenager to an adult. He submitted himself to that. And could you imagine, you know, go, going through everything as a young child goes through? And in his mind all along he's thinking, Calvary, 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 Calvary. Can you imagine that? All those years thinking about Calvary. And then it finally comes down to it in the Garden of Gethsemane. And it's like, Father, would you let this cup pass from me? I've been thinking about it all these years. And now it's almost too much to handle. And then he says, nevertheless, nevertheless, I will be done. Friend, listen, he voluntarily humbled himself. Now keep in mind, Paul has just instructed these believers in Philippi. Remember this, he said to have the mind of Christ. Okay, so think about it. He said, let this mind be in you. In other words, we talked about it last week. It means to have the same opinion of. Paul said, church at Philippi, you need to have the same opinion of yourself that Jesus had of himself. Well, what kind of opinion did he have? He humbled himself. He humbled himself. And so Paul has instructed them to have the mind of Christ, to think of themselves the way that Christ thought of himself, to have the same opinion of themselves that Christ had. Church, Paul's lesson for the church at Philippi, here it is. It's to do as Christ did. That's it. Be humble. Have a spirit of humility. Here it is. To lower yourself. To make less of yourself and more of God the Father. When you have those moments where maybe you're thinking about quitting. When you have those moments where you think, I just can't do this anymore. Listen, we, we, we lower ourselves and we realize it's not about me. It's about the will of the Father. Hey, when the temptation arises in your life and you know it's going to pull you away from the will of God. Hey, you stop and think about it. This is not about me. It's about the will of the Father. And so Paul's telling the church at Philippi, you need to have the same mind that Christ had. He humbled himself. Verse 8, he said, He humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. My mind thinks about uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs. I don't know if you've ever read it, looked through it. Maybe you own it, but you've never really opened it up and read it. It sat on my shelf for a long time before I actually went through it. I would challenge every child of God, if you don't, I had like five copies. I loaned them all out. I don't have none now. I don't have any now. I would challenge you, to get you a copy of the Fox's Book of Martyrs. You can get it cheap off Amazon, very cheap. And you go through there. Maybe just pick one a week and read about one one Christian a week and you read their story and you read what they went through for the name of Christ. I promise you this, if you're saved by the grace of God, I believe this, there's some point in that book tears will come to your eyes and you will weep, friend. When you read about these believers that they sacrificed everything for their faith in Jesus. They laid their lives on the line. And when they would come to them, you know, tied up to stakes and wood, and and they would say, listen, we're going to set fire to you if you don't denounce Jesus Christ. And they would literally say, go ahead, set fire to God be the glory, or say something positive about Jesus. And they would draw their last breath, friend, being martyr for their faith in Jesus. I'm telling you what, you think about it. Man, it, you know, you and I, we have not been called to do that at this, at this place in our nation's, you know, where we're at, okay, with our country and being a Christian in America. But when you think about what the future looks like, who knows what the future looks like? Church, we may be called to exercise our faith in a greater way. But Jesus, he humbled himself. And think about it. His humility led him all the way to death. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So Paul's instructed these believers to have the mind of Christ, and uh, he's telling them to humble themselves. And I, I really think, church, that this is the great struggle that many of us face. And here it is, okay, pushing our desires and our agenda aside for the will of God. That's not easy. That's tough, okay? Think about why some folks, you know, maybe go to certain churches, why they, why they go to certain places. Maybe it's for entertainment. Maybe it's because, you know, I've had, I've had people, you know, they'll call and say, what kind of programs do you have? Okay, I say, well, we have one. It's called Bible preaching. I mean, I mean, you know, now I know what they mean, right? I understand what they mean, and I try to be mindful and thoughtful of that. 
But you know what? If, I've, if we've got to use a rock and roll band to get them in the door, then you've got to use a rock and roll band to keep them in the door, okay? If you've got to use smoke and mirrors and lights and cameras and all this crazy stuff, listen, whatever you use to get somebody, you've got to use it to keep them. But if we use the Word of God and just Bible preaching and loving people, I'm telling you what, then that's all you've got to do to keep them, okay? And, and, and they'll be here for the right reason. And so you think about that struggle, right? You know, humbling ourselves and realizing it's not about us, it's about the Lord. Brother Chad, you, he shared something with me this morning. He didn't know I was going to use it. Brother, I'm using it. So uh, he shared it with me this morning when we were sitting at the table. It says this. It says, uh, what, church, what would it look like if the disciples valued worship and community? And some of you probably heard this, but I didn't. This is my first time. He said, uh, wor- it said, worship and community like many believers do their church gatherings. Listen to what he, it said. Peter was, would say, my mother-in-law came in for the weekend. Can't be there. Andrew might say, I was up kind of late last night. James, the son of Zebedee, might, might say, really needed some me time. Mm-hmm. John might would have said, I was there last week. Besides, I'm not really being fed. Mm, maybe open your Bible and do some feeding. <laughs> uh, Philip might would say, finally had a sunny day to hit the lake. Bartholomew might would say, had brunch scheduled with my Uncle Zed. <laughs> Thomas might would say, I doubt it would have been any good today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't know if you don't show up, right? And you know what's crazy? We go fishing, we don't know if it's going to be any good. Amen. Hey, we go hunting. We don't know if we're going to have a good day. Might not kill nothing, right? I mean, and you still go, right? Ladies, you go shopping. You might not find a single thing out there, right? You might even get discouraged and say, nothing fits. This is terrible. And, and you still go. But yet, well, you know, I doubt it would have been good today if I would went to church. Matthew might have said, I had to go get my taxes done. Uh, James, the son of Alphaeus, may have said, my dad, Alphaeus, wanted to, wanted to go fishing today. Thaddeus might have said, the kids needed a rest day. Oh, got to do that. Simon might have said, I didn't hear my alarm because I didn't set it because I don't have one. Yeah. Judas might have said something along the lines, you know, I'm getting tired of hearing the same old message. And then the end of the little article said, going to church is not about checking a religious box off your, quote, make God happy list. It's about being invested in the lives of others, participating in the mission of the gospel, loving and being loved. Following Jesus was never meant to be a solo experience. Pull up a seat at the table. It is a level table and there is room for all of us. And I thought, man, that's pretty good. Uh, You know, uh, church, being a believer is about doing what Paul told the church at Philippi. Here it is. Just be like Jesus, right? Just be like Jesus. Have the heart of a servant, okay? Have the mind that he had. Humble ourselves as he humbled himself. Put God the Father first. Put the plan of God first, right? Not your ideas, not your plans, not your dreams, not your agenda. Listen, just say, Lord, whatever you have for me, that's what I'm willing to do. That's what, that, that's what the Lord wants out of our life. Paul summed it up when he was writing the carnal believers at Corinth. He said this in 1 Corinthians 4 too. He said, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. That's it. Everything about our life as a believer, as a Christian, think about it, being Christ-like. It's about being humble. It's about being faithful. When that's not the case, church, we can know this, that we are not identifying with our Lord and Savior. Rather, we're identifying with our own wants and desires and our own ideas. Now, I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying, you know, uh, be some monk where you go out and find you a cave and take you a King James Bible and, you know, wrap yourself up in, you know, whatever and, and go in there and meditate for 24, you know, 20 hours a day and come out for four hours to eat something. I, listen, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying... Our focus ought to be, what does the Lord want for me to do, you know? How can I honor Jesus Christ? Like, put, take, take, our, take our focus off of us and put it on the Lord, put it on others. Jesus did what pleased the Father and told the church to be like, you know, Him. Now look at verse number 9, real quickly, Philippians 2, 9. He said, Wherefore God hath highly exalted Him and given Him a name which is above every name. All right, so Paul tells the saints in Philippi that because of Jesus lowering Himself, 
Because of him becoming a servant, because of him obeying the Father's will, because of that, wherefore, because of, he said, God also hath highly exalted him. Now, church, think about that for a second, okay? Yes, Jesus lowered himself. Yes, he was born a man. Yes, he became human like you and I. Still God, but also a man. But by doing so, what did God the Father do? He exalted him to the highest rank and power. Now, this is one of the greatest, one of the great paradoxes in Christianity. The way up is the way down, right? The, the, the way of more is the way of less. The way to be strong is the way of weakness. That don't make sense to us, okay? 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Church, when we make more of ourselves, we're making less of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we make less of ourselves... We should be making more of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we'll, make much about, if we'll make much about Jesus, I believe that Jesus will make much about you and I. I really believe that. Jesus did this and God exalted him above all. Answer this question, okay? He became a man. Paul said God hath highly exalted him, given him a name above every name. He became a man, was crucified, buried. Now you tell me right now, where's Jesus located? Amen. <laughs> He's located at the right hand of God the Father. He's been exalted. I mean, you think about it even back to his birth, okay? Think about even, it, Paul says, he's given him a name above every name. Who was it that told him to name him Jesus? God said his name shall be Jesus. Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 21. I mean, listen, friend, listen, uh, and, and what an amazing thing that is. It's a name that's above all names. And you know when Jesus ascended back to heaven, have you ever thought about this? He went back with something that he did not come here with. Think about this for a minute, okay? He came here as the Son of, he came as the son of God. Think about it. When he went back, he went back not only as the Son of God, but as the Son of Man, according to the Word of God. Friend, listen, and, and because of him lowering himself, Jesus, God hath highly exalted him, giving him a name above all names. There's no name like it. And Paul used Christ as the greatest example for the Philippian believers, you know, to, to, to be like him, you know, to think about Christ, to humble themselves as Christ humbled himself. And church, that's tough for us to do. I understand. We fight this robe of flesh and it's about me, 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 me. Everything around us points to what do we want and how do we feel and what makes us happy and what do we want to do. And I understand it's tough to crucify the flesh, but we need to start doing it. We need to start doing it. We need to stop and say, okay, what does God want out of my life? What does God want out of my children's life? Why am I making the decision that I'm making right now, right? Who's making the decision? Being in a school, we deal with parents and kids all the time. And one of our pet peeves that we hear with parents is, they say something along these lines. Well, I asked little Johnny what he wanted to do. How old's little Johnny? He's eight. I can... Okay, maybe let him pick out his chicken nugget sauce, but that's about it, okay? I mean, okay, do you want a cheeseburger Happy Meal or a hamburger Happy Meal? But your decision-making is very limited at eight years of age. But now, but now, well, we just, you know, we asked him if he wanted to go to church. Do what? Like, you're not getting a say-so, buddy, you know? We asked him if he wanted to, to do this and sing and be part of that and, and go with the youth group. No, 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 no. You don't get a say-so, right? And so, it, you know, we're living in a day and age where, you know, parents are, you know, what, what makes my kid happy? How about stop and say, what makes God happy? Amen. And let's do that. And if we'll just have a spirit of humility, I really think that God will bless us for it. Uh, that was Paul, his encouragement to the church at Philippi. And tonight, let's do the same and just think about the lovely Lord Jesus Christ as our example. Let's stand. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, we love you. Lord, thank you for your word and, Lord, the great example we have of your life and, Lord, your testimony and how that you did become a man. Lord, you lowered yourself. You walked away from glory, from heaven, to be born of the Virgin Mary, Lord, to give us eternal life. And, Lord, we are forever grateful and thankful. We are forever indebted to you for that. And, Lord, we know there's nothing we can do to repay it. Lord, the only thing you ask from us is just to be faithful. And God, I pray you'd help us to do that. Lord, uh, I pray you'd speak to all of our hearts, Lord, in the invitation. Lord, just help us to surrender our all, Father. Help us to be the Christian parents you've called us to be, the Christian husband and wife, and Lord, the Christian young people, teenagers, children you've called us to be. Lord, help us just to be, Lord, a, an example 
of you so that others might see you in our life. Lord, bless this invitation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Piano's going to play. If you'd like to talk to the Lord about something tonight, maybe you just think about the, maybe recently, maybe you just haven't been very humble. Maybe you just say, you know what, Lord? I've been thinking about me. It's been about me and what I want to do. But God, I haven't stopped and said, Lord, what do you want? Oh, listen, Jesus understands that temptation. He, he's, he's been there. He's done that. He's had it. Now, he didn't give in to it. He said, Lord, not my will be done, Father, but thy will. And maybe tonight we need to pray that. Maybe there's something going on and, man, you're asking the wrong people for advice. And you're asking, maybe you've asked your kids. Kids, what do you want to do? Oh, listen, Christian parent, that, 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 is not, that is very unwise on many levels. You need to step up and say, this is what we're going to do. I promise you they'll be okay. I promise you. I promise you. They'll actually be better off if you have them do something spiritual. Maybe it's a, a job situation. Maybe it's a, a relationship thing, a friendship thing. And, and you, you're worried about pleasing people versus pleasing God. You ought to say, Lord, help me to make this decision, whatever it is. Might be tough. Might be, not be easy. But ask God to help you to do that. Let's have the mind that Christ had. The same opinion of ourselves that Jesus had of himself. He just became a servant. Just, I'm just going to serve. just going to serve. I'm here for others. I'm here for others. I'm here to make a way for others. Let's think about that. Ask God to help us with it. When's the last time you did something for somebody? When's the last time you reached in and pulled out a little bit of cash and said, Hey, brother, hey, sister, I want to be a blessing to you. Well, preacher, I don't know who needs anything. Well, you ought to pray and say, God, lay somebody on my heart. Lord, lay a family on my heart that I could be a blessing to. God, give, give me somebody that I might could reach out to and be a source of encouragement to. Lord, lay somebody on my heart that needs a word of encouragement, a text message, a, a card in the mail, a phone call, a visit. Man, you already asked the Lord to do that. Lord, lay somebody on my heart, Lord, that I could take out to eat and be a blessing to them that way. If you don't ask, you might not ever know. Amen, amen. Church, praise the Lord. Hey, listen, uh, tomorrow night, make sure you give out all your tracks. And, uh, you know, uh, you might get some weird people show up at your front door, but <laughs> we always enjoy going back and watch the doorbell, and some of them are just like, woo, you know, but uh, be a witness, be a testimony, and be praying that the Lord will use those tracks, and, and maybe some kid will get saved. You never know. You never know. Hey, I believe this, that there's power in the Word. I believe that. And I believe if you share that right there, I believe that God can do a great work. And so we're here tonight because of the power, right? Amen. And there's power in the blood and God uses his word. And so we're going to give it out tomorrow night. Okay, let's have a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed and uh, we will see you on uh, Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. You want to come out, soul in a visitation. And then Sunday morning, uh, Sunday school at 10 o'clock that morning. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Pray, God, you dismiss us in safety. Give us a good night of rest, Lord. Be with all of our prayer requests that have been mentioned this evening, Lord.